This here is another viewer's broken gaming PC, and it apparently powers on but doesn't send a signal to a monitor. But how exactly did we get here? Context is super important when it comes to troubleshooting, and I act on this by asking folks who submit their systems for fix or flop to describe the issues at hand as if they were happening in real time. What did you see? What were you doing when the problem arose? And this owner, uh, well, he was descriptive to say the least. Now there's a lot in this message, but the gist of what you'll read here is that the system was moved a bit such that cables were stretched across the floor. His little brother apparently stepped on one of those cables connected to the graphics card, which resulted in said card being partially ripped out from the motherboard. I'm not totally sure how that happens if it's, you know, screwed down to the case and locked by a PCIe latch, but, uh, I guess with enough force, really anything's possible. From then on out, as you can imagine, things became very problematic. I suppose at one point he was able to actually get a picture from the card, uh, but it was very inconsistent and ultimately led to a total failure to send a picture, uh, which is where we are now. So it's definitely looking like something might be wrong with this graphics card, possibly even the motherboard if there was enough force involved. Regardless, this should make for an interesting diag, despite the video potentially being shorter than normal. I know some of you peek at the lengths of these videos to determine how complicated the fixes end up being. I have no idea how long this will be. I mean, this is like the whole point of the series, right? Is I'm going into this totally blind, apart from the description that you just saw. But I have high hopes we can get this thing back up and running by the end of it. I hope you'll stay with me. Are you sitting on a gaming PC without an activated copy of Windows? Forget $100 plus retail keys. Instead, snag an OEM Windows 10 or 11 key for a fraction of the price to unlock the full potential of the OS. Oh, and don't worry, they'll still remove those pesky activation watermarks. Click the links below to get started today and easily activate with your key under the activation tab within Windows settings. And be sure to use our special offer code SKGS for a sweet discount on a variety of options, including Windows 10 and 11, Pro and Home, and more. Hello there, and welcome to Fix or Flop, a playlist where we attempt to fix broken gaming PCs for free. We don't charge owners for replacement hardware or labor, and that's thanks to your viewership. Thank you so much for clicking on these videos. If you or somebody who has a broken computer and you'd like a chance to have it fixed for free here, be sure to submit a form linked in the video description. Okay, I think that covers the callouts. Let's talk about the specs of this computer before we dive deeper. It has a Ryzen 5 2600X, as well as an X370 motherboard, 16 gigs of XPG DDR4, and an RX 560 graphics card. It looks like the power supply is from OCZ, 600 watts, 80 plus certified, non-modular, and the case is from Thermaltake. Now, I hate that I have to do this, but I always see a few comments when videos featuring cheaper rigs go up on the channel. Greg, why didn't you upgrade this? Why didn't you upgrade that? You should throw them this new hardware. Throw them, dip into your pocket infinitely and just rebuild the whole system. Like, it, that's not the goal of this here. This isn't pimp my PC. We are here to fix the system. And if I see a dire need for an upgrade, I might consider it, but I, I can't just make a habit of throwing free stuff at a rig over and over again, aside from what already needs to be replaced, right, to fix the system. Uh, so if you're thinking, oh, he's gonna upgrade his graphics card no matter what, even if it's fine. I probably won't because I'd rather keep those cards I have on hand for systems that actually need those replacements in the future. Now, since the owner's description essentially implies that the rig powers on, it just doesn't send a picture to a monitor, right? I'm gonna go ahead and connect one of these. I'm not totally sure what we'll see when we power this on, but here goes nothing. Oh, okay, so it does turn on. The fans are all spinning. We do have a Dr. Debug at the bottom of this board. That's gonna come in super handy, I imagine. Uh, but we have a, we have a post. Okay, it actually looks like it's about to load into Windows as well. This is not what I expected. This, sure enough, is Windows, and I've actually cycled the power a few times at this point between clips, and it loads in every single time. Not entirely sure what I'm supposed to be fixing here. So you can see here, this is after a restart. The debug codes don't hang for too long. Typically this is just part of like the, the post process here, checking vital hardware. And eventually it hangs on 33, which I don't believe indicates there's any sort of problem. A quick web search tells us that 33 indicates some sort of CPU post memory initialization error. We're not seeing a physical error here. It loads into Windows every single reboot, but the code lingering just sort of bothers me. And 
if I remember anything about X370 boards, it's that they don't always play nicely with higher frequency RAM kits. I was curious because again, I'd seen some funky things with older Ryzen motherboards. This BIOS revision is F53G, which is actually the latest BIOS revision for this motherboard. We've logged into Windows now. The owner told us there was nothing sensitive on this primary boot drive. He seems to have had the impression that Steam and other things were installed on it. They are not. There are a few other drives with Steam games loaded onto them, but this looks like a fresh Windows install. He mentioned that he wasn't able to see his graphics card in the task manager. That, uh, we can confirm, is being detected in RX 560. So my first impression is that this card has seemingly survived its uh, physical altercation a bit earlier. My next course of action will be to run stress tests for both the CPU and GPU to check for stability. And these are gonna be worst case scenarios, more or less, and I'm doing this just to be preemptive. If we do see any issue there, then it's likely those issues might pop up later for the owner. So just trying to cover all of my bases. For security reasons, I don't connect owner's rigs to my personal networks here in the house. So I'm going to transfer those programs via a thumb drive. Torture test one for the CPU has started. So far, things seem stable. I'm inverted here, so I apologize. Let's see, yep. So everything appears to be working. So far, let's open up Furmark next, Benchmark 1080. And that so far seems to be working as well. Yeah, no issues with this RX 560. It's obviously a weaker card. This is a very budget oriented build. Nothing wrong with that, but that's just it. There's nothing wrong with any of this at least so far. And if you're wondering if this was potentially a temperature issue, you can see we're somewhere in the upper 60s here. I'm gonna let this run for about 20 minutes to make sure that it doesn't creep into uncomfortable territory, but this temp so far is perfectly fine. And while this is happening, I wanna cover a few extra bases. So I've spoken with the owner off camera, I've just basically told him, hey, I haven't found anything that indicates the system is unstable. It's not had a, a signal issue at all with my portable monitor. And again, we're running two of the most intensive stress tests for the silicon in here without issue. There, there are no problems so far and we are getting close to about 10 minutes in with this Fermar test and the Prime 95. Uh, so he told me that he was using an HDMI cable and that it was connected to the graphics card. My first instinct after seeing all this working was, okay, maybe he connected his display cable to his motherboard. Obviously that's not gonna work for two reasons. For one, if a discrete card is installed, typically the BIOS will default to discrete card for signal out. That would make sense. Secondly, there are no integrated graphics in 2600Xs, that's not a thing. And so you wouldn't get picture even if you didn't have a discrete card installed. Uh, the second thing I wanted to confirm was that he was using the HDMI port specifically on the card. And that was to rule out a potentially bad port. If he was using DVI, for example, not many folks use DVI anymore, but it, it's still there. It's still a, a port on this RX 560 anyway, then maybe he was just having an issue with that specific port uh, or display port off to the right of the HDMI one. But I am connected to HDMI now just to double down on the fact that he was using the same one when all of this went down and I haven't had any issues at all. It's not loose or anything. Like I'm, I'm jiggling the cable right now and the connection is still sound without any interruptions on screen. So unless things change in the next 10 minutes or so, my assumption is that this won't be an official conclusion because I can't test for it here. I should have asked for it in hindsight. My assumption would be that his display cable is bad. That or he has a monitor that's on its way out or a TV, whatever he was connected to. So the cable and his display source, those are the two things that he'll have to check if he gets the system back as is. There, there's nothing so far for me to fix here. Meanwhile. Would it surprise you to hear, temperatures have remained extremely consistent and well within their comfort zone, 75 degrees Celsius, nothing wrong here. And let's go ahead and stop this. You can see our Prime 95 loads are still running, no errors at all. We're just going to click stop. So yeah. This system checks out, no issues at all. And by proxy, we can infer this power supply is operating normally since uh, we were under such heavy loads. If any issues did exist in this unit, they certainly would have shown themselves earlier. This Dr. Debug 33 code is still here. I don't see any signs that it's affecting performance or stability. I'm inclined just to leave it as is. I've tried clearing the CMOS, it doesn't really do anything. And he isn't manually overclocking DRAM. 
So I think we're just gonna stay with this for now. The owner thought this had something to do with his no signal issue, but I think that's, again, a separate problem. It will likely come down to this here. Now on his side, whatever HDMI cable he was using to connect his monitor or TV is probably bad. And I suppose we shouldn't be surprised because if his story is true and his brother did kind of yank it out of the graphics card, it very well could have damaged pins in here, which could affect signal detection. And just so you have an idea of how aggressive I've been with this cable, just to try to replicate the issue. Well, obviously I unplugged it there. The moment I connect it, see, we get signal every single time. It it's just without hesitation. I'm jiggling this thing. I'm kind of yanking on it in ways that you probably shouldn't. Even on this side, there are no issues. It works. No black screens. Also, if you're curious, the owner seems completely caught off guard by this. This is a perfectly normal response to something you weren't expecting, right? So I don't think he was fishing for free hardware or anything. He's genuinely impressed that it works and uh, is just happy to have a rig back up and running again. And at risk of sounding redundant at this point, it's very likely a cheap and simple fix just replacing the display cable involved. This turned out to be a short one indeed. I didn't expect to not find any issues at all, but hopefully this video at least serves as sort of like a, a backstop for testing a rig that supposedly has issues. If you feel like you're going crazy because you haven't found any, this is a way to sort of cover your bases, right? You've checked the CPU, you've checked the GPU, you've checked the BIOS, you've checked the BIOS revision, you've checked uh, inadvertently, I suppose, there the power supply. We could run our inline tester with this as well, uh, but I see no reason to update this given the overall budget of this rig and the sheer stability we saw while running both Prime 95 and Firmark at the same time. Again, in hindsight, I wish I had accounted for that display cable. It didn't occur to me that that could be one of, if not the only problems with this rig, I just, I, based on what I was told, it sounded like a surefire graphics card replacement. And this being a cheaper RX 560, it wouldn't have been an issue to replace this with something of equal performance or maybe something even stronger, like a GTX 1080 or something like that. I have a few of those laying around in the closet. That would have been an easy drop-in with DDU. But as it stands, I, I think, I think it just went into hibernate mode. I want to, I, I'm hoping that's what happened. Yeah, that's what, okay, that's what happened. <laughs> I was, oh, you I was a, <laughs> definitely a bit worried there. I'm pretty confident that it was just sleeping since it woke up by pressing a key. Ooh, that, <laughs> that, that almost caught up to me live on camera. Uh, but yeah, so th this is, I mean, unfortunately not a very uh, in-depth puzzle sort of fix or flop like you're probably used to seeing, uh, but you can't really control what, what comes in. I started filming because I expected the issue to be pretty cataclysmic based on the description, and it turns out nothing on the computer side is wrong. It's very likely either a damaged monitor or a cable on the owner's side in his house uh, is the culprit. With that, remember, if you have a broken PC and you'd like a chance to have it fixed for free in this playlist, even though we didn't actually fix anything in this particular episode, be sure to submit a form linked in the video description. Remember, we have an open giveaway running right now. That's for an RTX 3060. All you have to do is subscribe to the new Salazar's Cars channel, where we're currently rebuilding a crash damaged manual Audi S5. Gosh, I love that car, and uh, we scooped it up for cheap. The repairs, though, haven't been all that cheap. And so if you like fix or flop, you like seeing things being repaired, troubleshot in the moment, there's been a ton of learning involved in those videos. So be sure to hop over there if you haven't already. Again, thank you so much for the support. Consider liking this one, sticking around for the next, and uh, I'll see you there. My name's Greg. Thanks for learning with me.